Welcome to the Ultimate Pattern Builder Scanner Guide, where I will show you how to scan and detect any pattern. For scanner, I won't show how to use it in Strategy Tester, simply because it's not useful. Scanner is meant for live trading. We already learned how to build candle with indicator. Then we learned how to test any pattern with expert advisor. And now we are ready to fully jump into live forex trading with this scanner that allows you scanning multi time frames and pairs. So let's start. First we need open chart to attach our scanner to it. Here are settings of this scanner. First part is about scanner itself. And second part is about building candle, which you are already familiar with. First parameter or option if you want is about using all default pairs. That means that all these pairs can be scanned at the same time. Default pairs are minor and major forex pairs. Let's take a look at them. For majors we have six pairs that are most used for trading. And they are all related to USD currency. For minors we have another 22 pairs, so scanner use every pair on this list except last one, which is Singapore dollar. I suggest that we go ahead and see how this first option of default pairs actually looks like in practice. Let me just turn off scanning activity for now. So that's it. It looks very simple and informative. I will just move chart a bit on the left that we have clear view. On the left we can see pairs in alphabetical order. You probably didn't notice that there is some blank space. That happens because we have same pair listed twice. And that leads us to second option in settings which allows you to manually add pairs. With this extra symbols field we can manually input pairs. Now I will remove doubled euro USD pair. As you see, blank space is gone, and so is manually added Euro USD, which was at the bottom of this panel. Now, if we disable default pairs and not add any of them, we literally shut down whole scanner. Let's get back to where we were. If you want to add more than one pair, just use comma between pairs without space. And we got new doubled pair at the bottom of this panel. But if we disable default pairs, then only manually added pairs will stay. When adding pairs, be cautious to type correctly. Use the same style as they are written on your symbol list. In my case, with uppercase. What about adding pair that is not default, like gold? Then just add it as other pairs with correct name and style. And here it is. Default pairs are listed by alphabet, manual added pairs are listed by order in which you input them. Now I will have default pairs and just gold for extra. We have one more option regarding pairs, that is for symbol suffix if your broker has it for pairs. For example letter A, but if your broker doesn't have it, Scanner will not find any pair on list, so it will be empty panel. Now we can move on from pairs to time frames. This scanner uses all main time frames that are in MetaTrader terminal. You can enable or disable them all with this option. Like for pairs, you can also manually add time frames. First disable option for all time frames and then set one by one. I will disable them all and just use one minute. Let's add one more time frame. If I repeat again, enabling all time frames will add them all regardless how you set any manual time frame. Now you know how to configure time frames and pairs. Next is visual configuration of panel. First of graphic user interface settings is position of whole panel on X axis. Let's try to change it. Lower value moves panel to the left. Now I will move it more to the right. Next option moves panel on the Y axis. With higher value we move it more down.
first two options can move whole panel, next two options moves columns and rows. As you saw, X shift moves columns. Lower value makes less space between them. Lastly, Y shift moves rows. Higher value separates them more, and lower value brings rows more closer. Font size simply changes size of text in the panel. I will enlarge text back. Third section of visualization is color. First color option changes time frames, pairs and empty signal. So now it is all in blue. Let's change it back to yellow. As for other three color options, name says it all, you can change color for number of signals. Signals with colors look like this. Everything that is yellow means that there is no signal, so it has number zero. If there is signal on its own, like just one, just two, or just three, it has color which is set for each signal. But whenever there are more signals together, like one, two, or one, two, three, color of highest number will apply. Just take a look at settings in panel. Let's first take a look at signal one example, which has red color set. You can see just red numbers one. And now change its color. If we choose signal one, two, it will apply green color when there is signal one, two together, because higher number has priority. But when signal one is on its own, then turquoise color still applies. Same story, if we choose 2, 3 signal and red color for signal 3, it will be red when signals 2, 3 are together and 3 on its own. While signal 2 still stays green, as it's said to be. And that's it, all that is left is technical side of alerts. We will now take a look at section named alerts. First option there is whether we want to hear sound when new signal arrives or not. And sound in my case sounds like this. If sound is set to false, there is obviously no sound. To see what sounds you have in the system, you can check their names under events options. With double click on any event, you can see names of default sounds. It's also possible to set your own. And then, if you have name, you can simply type it in under second option of alerting in scanner. Next option enables alert popping window. If it is set to true, you will get alert upon new signal arrival. In this window, it is possible to see more alerts from the past, however, newest ones are on the top. Same as for sound. With false setting, you won't be bothered with alerts. Option for email enables auto sending of alerts on any email. False setting disables this. Email can be set under tools, options and then email type. To use email alerting it has to be also enabled here and then you need correct settings. For SMTP server I use this form because I have Gmail email account. I guess this formation can be used for all Gmail accounts. SMTP login represents email account through which alerts are sent to specified email account. SMTP password is equal to email account password, which you set under SMTP login. I use same email for option from and also to, which such option I need only one email account to get alerts. You can freely test email function with this test button, and for this you don't need extra software like my scanner. Push notification option is important if you want to receive notification when using MetaTrader on mobile phone. Name of the set can be changed to any name and is visible when getting alert. It's basically part of the alert name. Set name is visible here. So if we change the default name of the set, it would look like this. And last thing to set is lock of messages. If you enable it, you will see similar info like when getting alerts. This lock of messages is on the left side of panel. To see more last messages, simply increase number of this option.
Thank you for watching this guide and I hope you will find this scanner useful and satisfying.